Rod Ovid here with another Take 5. That's where we take about five minutes each Monday through Saturday and go into the scriptures, find a portion, dig into it, pull out some of the context, the language, the different nuances, and really try to understand what God is telling us. It's a good exercise. It's a good thing to do. And from the response of many of you, we're glad we're doing it, and we think you are as well, and we're glad to do this. Today I want to look in uh, John. In the book of John, we're at a portion where Jesus is going about Galilee doing a number of miracles, and we see some of the responses of the people, and some of them are very natural. I mean, they're they're following him because of the miraculous signs that he had performed on the sick. We're told that in chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. And there's things happening here. He feeds 5,000 of them at one time. Well, actually, it's 5,000 plus kids and wives. And I mean, it's just a lot of people, maybe 15,000 people at one time. And he feeds them and he goes back across the lake. It says, but when they found him on the other side of the lake, verse 25, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, you're not looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What miraculous sign then will you give us that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? I always find that so incredible. He had just fed 5,000 of them. Uh, Show us a sign. What do you think he's been doing? But anyway, he says, Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert, as is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it's my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of heaven, the bread of God, is this. It's he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Now there's a few things we really want to zero in here. These people were in a situation where life was hard, We have to admit that, and in our day, life can be hard. And there are those listening right now where life is hard. Food is hard to come by. Jobs are hard to come by. And wouldn't you be delighted if you were them and Jesus comes and feeds you? I mean, they would immediately go back to say, is God setting up food again? He did that in the desert. And and they're hinting about it. They follow him around the lake, and Jesus calls it right away, you know, his, his ability to see through things. He says, you're not even looking for the miraculous signs. You're looking for food. <laughs> I gave you food, and here you are, very curious about it. So they said, oh, okay, uh, you're talking about approval from God. Then what must we do to do the works God requires? Otherwise, what do we have to do to, you know, sign up for the bread? And Jesus said, it's not about work. The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. To get the concept that Jesus is Messiah, to understand the plan of God was to redeem the world from sin, to get your heart and your mind in the right direction. So then they asked, what miraculous sign will you give us? And they hinted again, our forefathers ate the manna in the desert. And he says, look, I know what you guys think. You all think Moses did all these miracles, and he was a great man of God. You sometimes even think Moses brought the law, but he he was just a vehicle. And I'm telling you that God provided that food, and guess what? He's provided it again. But it's not the kind of food you're thinking. It's the ultimate food, the power food, the spiritual food from God, that of redemption and relationship with him. And it's the food that Jesus brings. It's the nourishment of our souls, the nourishment that is of utmost importance. He says, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. 
<laughs> just like the woman at the well. Oh, I'll take that water from now on. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he must have remembered the woman. And he who believes in me will never thirst. But as I told you, you have seen me and still you do not believe. So we have to ask ourselves, what do we know of God? What have we seen in the scriptures? What is it we know about him? And how do we react? What do we come to God for? Just the things we need Is it all wrapped up in the physical? Is it all wrapped up in daily needs? Those are important, no doubt. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus knew all about that. But if you haven't figured out yet that there's something far more important, and that is the very relationship God wants with you as an individual, then you're missing the boat. What are the works God wants you to do? He wants you to believe that Jesus is really the Son of God, that he came to redeem you, to give you a life and a relationship with God where you can exercise that daily in prayer, in reading the Word, in communion with God, in asking him, what can I do for you today? How should I behave? I need to treat others like you would have me treat them. And we go about our day with a God consciousness, an awareness that he exists and that we want to diligently seek him and do good works, to do appropriate things. That's the will of God. So keep it simple today. Perhaps now you can say, God, just bring someone in my life. Bring someone across my path. Let me give a smile. Let me give aid. Let me give help. Let me do it in Jesus' name. I believe in you. I want that solid relationship. You are the bread from heaven. Let me ingest it today. Let me live it. You do that, and we will indeed have a blessed day.